I grew up in western New South Wales um, on um, a big kind of sheep station on the Darling Barker and I spent a whole childhood there. I've still got family members who are there and um, some of my kind of earliest memories uh, of my father kind of, you know, obviously very busy, you know, mustering sheep or water or shearing or whatever we had to do, but he'd always make the time to kind of um, stop and, and paint. He loved painting the Darling River, so it was kind of something that um, I've had from an early age, him, the importance of him being able to take time out to paint and uh, create, so it was just kind of a bit instinctual for us as kids. We, we never worked with our father uh, painting. We were quite young. We'd always be playing on the riverbank while he was starting a study or a, a, a sketch or something or a painting. Um, but we used to sneak into his office because he had amazing oil paints. He had gold oil paint. And we'd kind of get some out of the tube and smear it on the walls a bit and just do little, you know, stick figures or whatever you do as kids. I first started studying at Sydney College, but I didn't, wasn't there for very long, and eventually I ended up at the National Art School, um, and I studied painting and mostly painting and printmaking for three years there. Um, so that was kind of the beginning of, of me really knowing I wanted to be an artist. Um, I guess even earlier than art school, I used to love the, the, the drawings of um, uh, Brett Whiteley. They were quite confronting when I was young, but they were also very loose. And I love the way he could move from drawing a kind of major work of, you know, Lavender Bay or something that was obviously a big work. And then, but then he'd move back home and he'd just draw whatever was, you know, kind of on his coffee table. I had a fantastic experimental drawing teacher, um, Lynn Eastaway, and she just opened up possibilities. Drawing could be anything. You could draw with light, you could draw with sticks or tape, or um, there was no limit to what you could do. And, and that is really where my art practice really just has come from, really, from her experimental drawing classes. Um, and it's, it's never stopped being um, interesting or, you know, exciting. It's just, just, you know, it's been a progression from there, really. As a rule, I tend to, to start with a line. And it's generally a, a drawn or painted drawn line. Um, and objects tend to come later. If I'm using a line as an object, it'll, it'll come, you know, later. It's quite basic, it's quite raw a lot of the time. Um, and a lot of the time the work is, it's, it's unexpected for me what comes out of the work. Emotionally, some of the work is really hard. But at times, it's, it's also, there's a lot of joy in the work. Time's important in the work, the time it takes, uh, the time I've been doing it, um, and the time it's, it's given back to me as well. Anything can be an artwork, anything can be a drawing, and it's all about uh, just the emotional content you can put into it and the simplicity of some things, you know. It doesn't have to be overworked or overdone, and it, it, there can be a bit of kind of chaos, and, and even in the gallery, works will, oh, my God, I wasn't going to put that there, but now I will because um, that feels, feels how it should be.
objects and um, mixed media elements in my work, they kind of almost secondary, the drawing stage of work kind of comes first and often, you know, I'll start a work just with some rough kind of uh, marks. Often feathers and um, hair comes later, either cut hair, just cut onto the painting or lengths of hair. Feathers are a lovely thing, they slow me down when I work because normally, you know, I'm in a bit of a rush um, with paint and pencil. But if I use feathers, then it's, it's a really slow process. I have to kind of strip, strip the feather and poke a little hole in the paper and, and glue from the back. So it just, it just gives me a bit more space um, in my head to kind of when I'm working to use objects. Objects have a very different uh, feel to them. They're slower and I have to, I have to really, you know, kick my brain into gear a bit when I use an object. It demands something more of me than, than a, a, a line with paint or pencil. Um, so, you know, like I said, the drawing does kind of come first. Um, and from there, objects tend to, they tend to free the, the painting or the drawing up a bit. They, they, give it a, they give it a bit of a life of its own, especially some of the objects that I have that um, are floating in front of the work or with the work. Um, and I think that's a, kind of good for a viewer too. They, they're not just fixated just on, on a work on the wall. It's, it comes out from the wall or along the wall. Um, so yeah, objects are important. Um, and I, you know, I just collect stuff, you know, so there's always stuff there waiting to find other stuff um, to, to end up as an artwork. With some of my objects, I've um, been working on a series of them and they're kind of called objects of desire. They're just simple objects that when, when they come together, um, you know, have a life of their own and, and you know, they just, they do nice things. This little, this little one here, um, song, it's just, you know, a cowbell, some wire and some feathers um, and a little piece of paper with the word song written on it. Uh, but it just, it just kind of came together naturally. Also very quickly this one, you know, they were just wrapped around quickly and, and quite roughly. But it's kind of found its, its, its own kind of way in the world, you know, with its, you know, quiver and its feathers and its, yeah. It's, it's a really, a, a lovely piece for me, this one. In the other room there, I've got a little uh, drawing and it's, it's kind of called, it's not all about happiness. Um, and it's got, I've just drawn really quickly with, with my right hand, I've drawn my left hand like that. And it's quite big, the hands like that. And I've just drawn my, my left hand and then I've put the pencil down, I've swapped, I've got my right hand and I've drawn my right hand with my left hand. So the little picture has a, you know, hands like that. But one's a bit clunky because it's drawn with my left hand and the other one looks okay because it's drawn with my right. And it's titled, Right Hand Draws, Left Hand Draws Right. And then in the middle, um, I've just hung this little, beautiful little fabric bird, painted blue bird. And it just, it just spins in between these, these hands, it just rotates. Um, and it, just the movement in that, it just gives the work, um, you know, a life of its own. Um, it, it makes its own decisions then because it has this, you know, revolving object um, in the hands. It's just always been part of my life and it's, it's a huge part because it allows me just to get inside myself. Paintings allow me to get myself out, to put what I'm thinking or feeling um, into an artwork. And I can do it with a lot of diversity when I use the objects I do and the, um, and the way I work. I, there's no kind of limitation with, for me really with what I would put, would have go with something or be with something or, um, so yeah, there's, it's, uh, it's a freedom, it's a, a kind of lesson, it's a, you know, it's, it's a great way to be able to work, you know. Not all the stories are really that clear, um, and, and not all of them are 
out there kind of in the world. They're, you know, they're in, more in an inner world for me and it's pretty much, I like my work to be more for the viewer to, um, to, to work out what they get out of them. For me, it's, I have an internal story with them, but that's my story. Um, and I kind of almost like that the viewer can take their own story from it or, you know, dig into mine a bit more. But um, yeah, the, 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 yeah, the stories are there, but um, they're quiet.